In this Kotlin on Android tutorial, we're going to learn how to switch between fragments. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, so this tutorial is a follow-on from the previous series, previous episode, where we learned how to create a fragment. So if we go to my website here, there's a you can actually get the code to start this tutorial from GitHub here. And members on the professional plan who or buy this particular plan for ten dollars. Uh, do get a video describing how to get the code from GitHub as well. Those get an um, extra that's included in the plan. Okay, so we'll make a start now. So if I scroll on down here, well, basically we need to create a second fragment for us to switch between the two fragments. So we'll go into our Android Studio now. I'm just going to open up the project here. Okay, so we've got the first image fragment now, and we've and with that fragment, we've got a layout that gets inflated. What I'm going to do is make a copy of this using the refactor F5, and I'm just going to change the name to second, and just go inside there and make a few little changes. So let's we'll go to second, select OK. I will add it to Git. It's going to be uploaded to Git. So this is the second image fragment here. I've just got to do a few slight changes. We want to change the ID for this. Change. And I will change this to second fragment image view there. And we'll also have to change the name of the fragment bar as well to second. And those should be the only changes we need to make for this l fragment layout file. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So if you want to select the first image fragment, and again, press F5 for refractor. And as you can guess, I'm going to change the name first to second. Select OK. A little bit slow. It's funny, and as you can see up at the top here, it has been renamed to the second image fragment. Okay, there's going to be a few little slight changes I need to make here. Um, the layout inflator is an important one. So currently, if you look here, it's still inflating the fragment first image layout. So we want it to inflate the fragment second image layout. So change that to second image layout file. So now we are correctly inflating the correct layout file. And the only real, uh, and it's a good idea to do a quick scan of this code here. And it's also the image view here as well. So we do need to make sure we call the correct image view and the correct layout. So we'll change this one, the first image fragment view, change that to the second image second image fragment view and so we will need to replace this URL as well so we can get a separate image for this um, I'll go back to the website here and I have inserted the location of the different URL here and we'll go back to here it's a matter of just pasting that in there and we just want to do a quick check of the code just to make sure we've got no first such as this one's changed I'll just change that to second okay and this let me do a quick search in the code here just in case I didn't pick up any first there. So again here we'll have to change this one to second. Okay, 
And one good thing to look for here is you can see that the first image uh, synthetic ext um, Kotlin extension is no longer being used. So that so we've successfully migrated across to the second image layer basically so we can delete that first one okay so that's fine for the two fragments or the fragment and the layout that was set up for this so we're going to move across to the next step so we're going to create a menu and i just want to set up some icons for those menus as well because they'll be used in the later tutorials so what i'm going to go here go to is go into drawable right click on drawable select new scroll on down to image asset and what I like to do is just change it to action bar and first thing to do is just to change the action name because you might forget that I normally do and I'm just going to call this image one I'm going to change the theme to dark and select the clip art click clip art and I'm just going to type one just to see so I'm just going to select looks one as the icon image and we'll just double check to see that there is a two there is a two so I'm just going to type one in the search bar and select this icon here and then select OK and I'll just keep everything else from range the same select next and finish and if we go on down to the drawables we should see that we've got our uh, image one drawables at various resolutions and we're going to do the exact same again but for image two now I'm going to create a layout for our menu because the menu is what we're going to use to switch between the fragments so I'm just going to click on the resource folder and then we'll, we'll select an Android resource file and for the resource type select change that to menu and then for the file name I'm just going to call this fragment menu and select OK OK we have by default opened up in the design tab down here select text tab and what we're just going to do here is add two items representing the each fragment. I'm just going to put a closing tag on that. And for the first one, I'll select the ID, which will be the first fragment item. And now I can select a title for that. Um, that's going to be a string. And the title for this will just be, I'll just call this first image. And I'm going to select Alt Enter for Mac and create a string resource. For that and the resource will just be first image fragment select OK and if we go back down to here I just want to select the icon for that and that will be the one of the drawables we added which will be the action image one I didn't keep my naming there consistent but I think everyone will understand what's happening there okay now I want to create another fragment so what I might just do is just copy this item here and just just quickly rename it so the ID I can change to second and the string will do the same thing there as well and set the resource name for that resource value and second image fragment select OK and we'll change the drawable for that Let's see what 
we got there to two. I should have been much more descriptive with that, but I think everyone knows what's happening. Now we're going to the code here and actually put in, put together the code that will display the menu and add a, another men, uh, another method that will pick up the click listeners for the menu items. So we'll go into our main activity and what I'm going to do here is we're not going to be loading the uh, fragment on default, we're going to be loading it via the menu so we can delete these two lines here. Okay now I'm going to create a new um, function or use one of the activity functions for on create options menu. Okay, and we don't need this line here, you can just remove it. And what I'm going to do here is it's called the menu inflator. It's get menu inflator in Android. And we're just going to call it inflate. And now we select our menu fragment that we created just before. And we do need to pass in the parameter menu for that as well. And we will just return it with the uh, value true. Okay, so that's all you need to do for the on create options menu that will display your menu. Right, the next step is adding click listeners so when you click on an item in the menu it does something. So we will use another activity method here and this will be on options item selected. And again I'm going to remove this line here and what we're going to do is use a when expression um, notice the word expression, it will, hold, it will hold and return a value, but it's also going to process, um, switch between various items, or select, select between various items. So first of all, I need to call the parameter item, and I'll just highlight this here. Notice menu view has got the question mark behind it, that means it's a... Uh, null safe variable it can ha it can handle the null value you, you can set null to it basically so I do need to set the question mark there for that that as well and then select item ID if you don't put the question mark you will get a compile error uh, from the Kotlin compiler okay so what I'm going to do here is handle the else statement here it's like the default in the old switch statements in Java. Okay, so we can now let's just call the super constructor here with this line here. So we're just calling the super constructor if no other items are recognized from the menu. Okay, so let's start with the first one. The ID will be the first item fragment. That was from here. That's the ID for the item here and with second item fragment there. Okay, so we'll call that, um, set up some curly braces, and the first thing we want to do is to actually get our fragment. So I'm going to create a value called fragment, because we're going to uh, send it across to the replace fragment function. And we're creating a, actually creating a fragment, so we can call our first image fragment here, with just the new instance and we went through the details for this in the previous tutorial when we created a fragment. So this will, this will basically create us our first fragment. Then underneath that we want to actually display the fragment so we can call our replace fragment function from the previous tutorial and just pass in the fragment value to the parameter. And we will, I'm just going to put true here. Basically we're going to return true which means we have consumed the click. Um, I'm not putting return true and I'll explain that at the end of this implementation of the function. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll do exactly the same thing for the second menu item which will be the second fragment, so r.id. Second menu item, exactly the same, curly braces, we're going to set up a fragment, second image fragment, new instance, replace fragment with the value of the fragment and then true. It's virtually the same. Okay, we are getting an error down here. There's no return statement. 
But if you remember at the beginning, I said we're going to use the when expression. So expressions in Kotlin hold, or you can think of them, they return a value. So all we need to do is in front of the when, we can just type return. And the IDE does highlight our expression as well for us, which is quite nice. Okay, so those should be the only changes we need to make. So we've added a uh, method here to display the menu and a method here to put click listeners just to handle the events when a menu item is clicked. So we'll just run the code and just check to see if it works. Okay, the application is now started. I will, if you look at the top right hand corner there on the toolbar, you will see the menu icon. So we'll select that. And now we've got our two menu items being displayed. So I'm just going to select the first one. And as you can see, the little progress bar on, on for a little while, and then the image being displayed. So that's been downloaded. Now we'll select the second fragment. And as you can see, the second fragment's been loaded as well. And we can go back to the first fragment, and it goes straight back. It's now in the cache using the Glide library. Okay, so that just proves how we, we just proved that we can switch between our two fragments. And that concludes the switching fragments tutorial. We did go through a bunch of stuff where we learned how to make copies of um, layouts and fragments using the F5 command. We learned how to insert drawables into our Android project using the Android Studio. And we also learned how to create a menu and put in the code for inflating that menu and putting listeners for that code. And then as well as creating our fragments and using the function from the previous tutorial to switch between those fragments okay so if you do want to get notified of these tutorials i'm working on don't forget to click on that subscribe button if you look down here at the episodes currently this is episode number two these episodes are released to the channel on a weekly basis and to youtube a few days later if you're impatient and you want to get hold of all these episodes straight away you can buy them outright for the price of 10 us dollars or you can subscribe to the professional membership plan where you've got access to all the tutorials ad free as well as bonus premium material okay and you i do recommend that you sort of follow me on twitter and um, uh, go onto my facebook page as well i will put my handle for that so you can access that because i do publish all my updates on both of those platforms and I don't recommend that you post questions to YouTube because I'm very busy, but I do provide what I call paid consultancy support at CodeMentor, and I'll put a link to my CodeMentor address there as well. Okay, that finishes the Switching Fragments tutorial. Thank you for watching this. Bye for now.